Good morning, Mark Savage here. In my workshop, gloves are on. It's not raining outside. Poo weather's back, five degrees last night. End of September, so expected. Not the time to ride a race bike. Although the sun is out this morning. The sky. However, cold it is. Anyhow, what are we talking about today? Kawasaki's ZX6R. 636 cc's of roaring racing power. <laughs> you know Kawasaki expected this bike to go on the track when they put a lap button and a counter button purposefully on the handlebars. I mean, come on. <laughs> now, you know I love my Jexas. Lots of video on Jexas on my channel. K4, K5, 600, 750s. Not at a thousand, or so they do try and kill you. However, 112 brake horsepower. Wow. Compared to 96, I think it is for the Jexa, this is a lot, lot more. I mean, 36 cc is more, but does it go? I, d I do love them. Um, as you know, I like the earlier ones. I've had a silver and green one on this channel now um, of the old C and J's and G's, you know, the early ones, 2000 up 2003, before they got this B1H model, which is 2004. Still got chokes, still carb. Very nice bike, though. You don't really get to see much of her in my shed, but this has got some lovely decals on her as well. But it has been abused. It's got a little scratch here. I don't think this has been down the road, but I do think it's been pushed in and out of a garage, maybe. Um, the bloke that had it, scratches. The bloke that had it um, was a horsey fella, and um, it just didn't know nothing about bikes, really. Hence, it's just really filthy. Again, a little bit here. So yeah, it looks like it's had a very, very light spiel. Nothing on the crash bung. So again, I'm not sure whether this actually was over properly or not. Oddly, this is snapped. Front headlights don't work. This doesn't sit properly. And oh, that's why. Heat glue, that's why. Battery, best we charge. The oh, it's just a bit tacky in it. I always say, never throw anything out. As you see in my videos, I've got loads of crap. However, GSXR, they're gonna fit. That will replace a snapped one, not the whole thing. If you look at the back sets, I'm gonna take this one off anyway, as it's got a seat hump. I'm gonna replace the other side with this one. Nice and shiny. I may take that off. And yuck. And of course the chain. Put on a paddock stand. Chain. Yeah, that's not, not brilliant. I'm gonna clean that up completely. I'm gonna really polish it and give her some love. Now, however, she does start really, really well. I've checked the oil as well, and it's not that bad. So, my old man used to say, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Remember I say don't chuck nothing away? <laughs> These are from a 636 early model. I kept them, because I bought them and turned them into a carburetor. So, I, you know, just don't throw things away. And the other one. I don't need them, but I just <laughs> tend not to throw things away. Now, these aren't going to be, because they're Jexas, they're not going to be a perfect fit. But because it's not for a person's foot and only for the exhaust hanger, to be honest with you, I'll make it fit. Just look a lot nicer. So, lights. Um, got to work out why the horn and lights aren't working. It's not going to be a fuse. Either a plug or the blower, or I've got electrical problems. Electrical problems, then it's got to be all the fairings off and then the tank's up and I'm have to give it a service and look and whatever you there. There's some little snap little bits and bobs. I reckon someone's maybe tried to look at why the lights aren't working already and ripped that one up. I like the dash on these, you know. I said this is a 2004 model, 27 on the clock, 14 years old. That's quite good, actually. Tinted screen, double bubble, like that. It just needs a lot of TLC, something that you know I'm good at. So, <laughs> let's get on with fixing these. I'll show you me fixing the peg. If it doesn't fit, look an idiot. Um, tighten the chain, done tighten chain for again. I'll show you that. Um, headlights, as I said, it'd be nice if it was both bulbs. I can't, I can't see it being both bulbs, but sometimes you need to just check the very basics rather than going deep into it before. On my ped videos, I've done lots of things, you know, static coil, I've looked at all the bits and bobs in it. And the bulbs on PES are 35 watt, and people put ordinary car bulbs in them, which are 55, 60 watt, and it drains lots of power and they, they blink and so on. So sometimes you take little bits away. So I'm gonna check both bulbs first, check the connections for the horn, 
and then carry on that way and then eventually get back to whatever. I'm gonna do what I always say though. Take the battery off. Give that a charge. Unfortunately, my battery charger is in the garage. <laughs> my video is everyone's got to have an airline, but you must have a chainsaw. <laughs> just feels nice holding. Okay, it's nothing to do with bikes. I just bought one because my neighbour's tree. I stopped talking about chainsaws, sorry. Mm, chainsaw. <laughs> Back to serious mode. Let's get on with it. So far, fixing the side lights. One, two. The horn that's in here somewhere, well, that has power to the points, but the horn's gone. Easy fix. But as for the headlights, not so easy. There's no power to either side. I know that the light doesn't come on until you start the bike, but I've got no high beam or anything, so that needs further investigation. Um, whether it's wire or not, I don't know. The side lights back and front work, and I said always put the battery on charge. I'm using a simple power pack just for the lights, not to start the bike, but just for the lights. I did find when taking the battery off a cheap little vehicle tracker. I say cheap because it was just wired into the battery. Which meant that if someone had a took the bike first head down was no more tracking. I thought it was supposed to be a bit better wired than that, you know, snuck in somewhere else and connected to something else. That's what I would have done, not just connect it straight to the battery. Right. Oh I forgot to mention. It does have a nice scorpion end can on it. In my recent videos, the tires are good and matching. <laughs> right, let's try and find out why um Electrics, you've got to love electrics. There's no switch for them on and off, you know, that was the first thing I checked. Um, so there is no on and off switch would be uh, really, really bloody simple, wouldn't it? But it's not. So, more investigation. Believe me, when I tell you getting one bolt off can knack you. This bugger here, that was full on, mate, I tell you. Absolutely full on, anyway. With some penetrating spray. Managed to get it off and get it off. Anyway, on good news, look, now they're not as flick up as they should be. I might have to take them off and widen them a little bit. I mean, they are from a Jexa. On the other side, I married it up again. But again, they don't really flick up. That could be an MOT failure. Put the back one off, so I'm going to clean that up. But I might have to just widen these if it's a slightly. Um, but they look a lot better. What's the next? Get that one off. A shiny one on. Do you know, just some penetrating oil, um, if it had greased the nipple, if it had greased the bolt up, you'd never have this problem. So, as I couldn't find the uh, live to the lights, I thought I'd pot around on something else, because that's now going to have to be all the fairings off and then trace the power and try and find out. But I have got side lights and brake lights and indicators, and I know where the horn's not working. So, it's progression. So, sometimes it's the simplest thing, like uses. Bolt, turn on, yeah, and off, and on. Oh, the bolt meter, change the fuse. It seems like both bulbs, it's easy for you to say, both bulbs <laughs> are blowing, which resulted in blowing the fuse. Here you go, so I didn't check wiring, although I did, and made the process back to the fuse box, and there was a 10 amp fuse blowing. So now I've changed the bulbs, and uh, Job done there, hopefully. Doesn't that look a lot, lot neater now? Nice, clean and tidy, um, rather than the rusty bits. And yeah, coming along. Be the, well, change the bulbs, and next will be the chain. But I'm gonna make sure them bulbs do work properly, and then uh, get to the chain. And then we start doing what I do like doing, which is TLC and cleaning up, making it look pretty. Fuse. Been getting the bin. Are you ready? Change the other bowl. However, progression. So 
They were both blowing. Which I can clearly see. <laughs> and I put another two in there. But I mean, these ones I had lying about in my van for the last God knows how long. So I uh, probably need one more. But anyway, just shows sometimes, doesn't it? Eh? Fuse, bulb. They must have blown, which blew the fuse and blah de blah -de. Anyway, that's the result. Next, pull it all back together again. Polish, clean, decals, looking yummy. Now remember, when doing a chain, always have your tools ready. Before you loosen this bolt, there's these. Undo that one, and make sure this one is tight against it, because you know the wheel will straighten the first place. Then, symmetrically, up and down. Do not do any more than quarter turns on each. If you do, this wheel, if you do the wheel, will end up left or right and it will be all wrong basically, so don't do it. So, use maintenance spray, get them ready, use a big bar like I'm using here and undo it. Undo it like that. Nice and easy once you lose a bit of maintenance spray on it as well because this one's a bit rusty. That's all you do, you know, up and down. What you're aiming for on this rusty chain is not as much as that. It should be about that. Not all the way up, it's banging, that's, that's, that's wrong. And then we're gonna clean this chain up because you can see some of the links aren't quite there, are they? So actually, what I'm gonna do now, tighten it back up, clean and loosen the chain off, and then tighten it. Makes more sense. Now that'll be the chain done, pegs done, Headlights all done now. Bulbs, well, went for four bulbs. Um, probably in the van bashing around, I guess they blew. Horn, and then we can start uh, tidying them up. And then we're gonna get outside and have a look how pretty and lovely she looks. When you're happy, remember the overspray, don't worry about that, because we're gonna wash it in a minute. But that's what you should be having there. And that's perfect now. All clean, all sprayed up. And there we have a very nice, shiny Kawasaki. ZX6R636. 162 miles per hour at this little baby. 112 brake. As I said earlier, that's quite a lot more than the old Jexas. 150 miles in the tank. 18 litres in there. The whole bike weighs 161 kilos. Nice, well, very light. 120 front tyre and a 180 rear tyre. Scorpion end count in this one, obviously not standard. Sounds quite nice though. You reckon you'll get 150 miles out of this tank, but again, it's how you ride it. These really are made for just, well, motoring up and down the road. I said, you've got the lap counter, and to reset it as well. They do sound nice, they do look nice. Would I rather in green? Uh, that's a hard one, isn't it? I'm a Kawasaki green man, but you know what, in these colors here, doesn't look too bad at all, does it? There are a few marks on this little one. I don't love the tiny indicators. Front calipers are a little bit worn. I mean, it is 2004, so it's 14 years old. Any road soap will do that nowadays. I will clean up these wheels. Tires are very good, though. Always well, got to have crash bungs on these. I've still got to make these a little bit wider because I will think they'll fail the MOT if I don't. But they flick up, obviously, but not flick down again. I did change that one. Left that side off. Just single seat. You're never going to need it, are you? Just a few more touch up and clean ups. Job done. Here we have it on the last of September sunny days. I think I'll have to go out for a ride. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this little video. Like, share, subscribe. I'll keep making them. Take care of yourselves on the road.